Hi, this is Joe Morinelli from Radio Voice Italia. Our guest tonight on Radio Voice Italia is Vincent and Emily Ricciardi. Thanks for being a guest tonight. Really excited to be here. Now, you two are married singing duo from New York, the tri-state area. Your repertoire is very diverse and includes grand opera, musical theater, the American songbook, and your performances feature the music of many famous artists such as Mario Lanza, Julie Andrews, Andrea Bocelli, Celine Dion, and many more. Tell us about how you both met and where your inspiration came from. It's funny you mention that. We actually talk about this a lot in our show, and it's wonderful for us to perform as husband and wife. Mm -hmm. We actually met at an audition of Rodgers and Hammerstein's Carousel in Brooklyn in 2008, and I was running late to the audition, and it was a beautiful spring afternoon, and they had the doors open, so I heard the men still auditioning, and I realized Mm -hmm. I hadn't missed my opportunity opportunity to audition and I walked in and they were finishing up the male singers and there was a guy standing there with kind of long curly hair (laughs) and I thought wow he did a really fantastic job I hope he lands this part and then later on I sang and I was actually cast as Julie Jordan but I never saw the guy again until later that Mm -hmm. fall when I was auditioning for a production at the same theater uh, the Pirates of Penzance Mm -hmm. And we ended up working together. Uh, Vincent played Frederick, and I was playing Edith in that uh, production. And then we started dating shortly thereafter and have been singing together ever since. That's great. Emily and I have the distinct advantage of uh, being sort of American musical theater people um, who are rooted in the kind of classic Rodgers and Hammerstein, Leonard Bernstein school of musical theater. Mm -hmm. Uh, When I was coming up, I kept being told that I should really look into being an opera singer and studying opera more seriously. At the time, uh, the closest I got to opera was singing a lot of uh, the old Neapolitan songs. Oh, sure. Like O Solo Mio and uh, Torna Sorienta, Mala Femina, uh, all songs I learned from my grandfather. Oh, great. And then as we started performing together in the Italian community, I started adding more Italian opera and uh, a lot of Connie Francis songs to my repertoire. And here we have our Italian-American show that we perform today for people. That's so great. And you said your father was a singer also, Vince? My grandfather and my mother. Now, my grandfather was more of a crooner in the 50s. Okay. He sang a lot of the old Italian songs kind of the same way Jimmy Roselli did. And uh, he had worked with Guy Lombardo, and uh, I know he knew Vic Damone. Oh, he sure. And Vic Damone were friends because uh, they grew up in the same neighborhood. He, you know, sang professionally for a few years, and then uh, when things didn't take off, he, you know, he had a family. And my mother was kind of the same way, but again, she wasn't really an opera singer. She was more of a pop singer, sort of in the same vein as Linda Rodstadt or... Uh, Karen Carpenter. Uh, when I expressed an uh, interest in singing the old Italian music, my grandfather just lit up, and so he taught me a lot of the old Italian music. I, again, I started kind of singing O Solo Mio. I actually did, I was a karaoke jockey in Little Italy. Oh, how about kind that? Of really cool. So I really? I karaoke in Little Italy, and I sang a lot of theater, but it also gave me an opportunity to sing all the old Italian songs that my grandfather had taught me. And, you know, I would sing all this music all night, but then I would, I would open up with, like, O Solo Mio, and I would stop the place. And so I kind of was like, oh, this is, there's something to this. People really love this music, and, and people really enjoy the way I sing it. And that's really when I started studying uh, more classical music and kind of making my journey, bridging what was, like, sort of a traditional musical theater you know, career into something more classically oriented, and I started taking some real voice lessons with a, a really good teacher. It grew from there, and I started doing uh, tributes to Mario Lanza. Yes. Um, and then I worked with a lot of the guys. Uh, Aaron Caruso and I did a big show at the Schubert Theater, uh, along with a few other singers, uh, a few years ago. And uh, from there, I did my own little Mario Lanza tribute in New York City and in a couple of different places. Uh, people kept asking if I could bring a soprano with me. And it was just sort of natural. Emily and I were only engaged at the time, and then we just started, instead of having like a guest artist, she and I just started splitting the show. Sure. So Emily doing, you know, the, the great hits of musical theater, like I could have danced all night, and uh, but also throwing in great pieces of operatic um, repertoire, like O Mio Babino Caro. Mm-hmm. And uh, I would do the same sort of. I would sing the Nessun Dorma and O Solo Mio, 
And then I would throw in something like On the Street Where You Live or uh, Mario Lanza hits like Be My Love. Absolutely. And it just grew from there. That's great. You know, uh, we are very big. I don't know if you know this or not, but we're very big Mario Lanza fans. You know, we're here in Philadelphia and we support the museum and the uh, Mario Lanza Society. We attend the annual Mario Lanza Ball and all that. And I can tell you... I got to sing... I can tell I you... I the Mario Lanza Ball a couple times. Oh, have you? Oh, that's great. I wonder if you were there when we were there. Yeah. When we've done some of the luncheons where we've uh, met Elaine Malbin and Bill Rodane, um has, has asked us to sing for the luncheons quite often as well. It's oh, a that's really great. lovely time. And, and the museum is just spectacular. That's great. In that's 2011, great. I stepped in last minute for a tenor who couldn't make it. I, I had sang the night before at the little cafe. Bill had nicely invited me to attend the ball and while I was there one of they were doing like a three tenor salute and one of the tenors couldn't make it so I stepped in and I sang with these other gentlemen uh, which was kind of fun because they were both uh, you know right out of uh, the American Vocal Academy and Curtis I, you know, I, I studied privately. I didn't study in the conservatory. I thought it was nice to get on stage with those guys and, and flex my muscles a little bit, which was fun. And then the next year, because I had uh, done such a wonderful job and really done Bill a, a favor in doing that, he asked me to be the guest of honor and do a little performance of my own, which was really a lot of fun. So I'm glad there's a connection there. I couldn't wait to ask you that question. Uh, yeah, but you know, Lanza, Lanza was great for me because... He was one of the few singers out there who could really transition from the old school Rodgers and Hammerstein, mm -hmm. uh, legit Broadway stuff that I was in love with, that I was training for many years to sing, and also turn around and turn a little switch, mm -hmm. modify things just a little bit, and be a completely legitimate opera singer. Sure. You know, there's very few people who can really do that. Exactly. Really turn that switch. Exactly. It's subtle, but it's, it's really hard for a lot of opera singers to really lighten it up enough to do the musical theater, or for some of the musical theater friends that I have, to really open it up and do that full, legit thing that Mario was able to do so seamlessly. And also, uh, you know, we're going to feature some of your selections during the interview, and we're definitely going to play your rendition of Be My Love. I think you do a wonderful job on that. Thanks. There's, uh, a, there's a funny story about that, actually. We, uh, Vinny built that track in, in his own home studio, and our voice teacher, David Schaefer, helped us a lot with the music and the orchestrations. And then the background vocals, it's a compilation of me and several of our other talented friends who sing. So that track is near and dear kind of to our hearts, and we made it into our own MGM musical sound. So yeah. that's a fun one to share. Great, because the background vocalists, I've literally got people who have sung on Broadway, people who sing at the Met currently. Uh, some really great friends of mine who I've worked with in both musical theater and in opera graced me uh, very very graciously with their voice and their talent for that. Okay, I have a question for you, Vincent. One of the photos that I uh, took a look at on your website, I guess, was, uh, I guess it's in the studio. You're using a very interesting microphone array. I believe there's four microphones set up. Is that something you use uh, generally? <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, that was actually kind of my first YouTube video. Um, I threw all those mics up with the intention of putting a second video up, uh, just kind of showing people the difference between how one microphone can change the sound of a recording versus another. Yes. Uh, so there's actually a second video. So the first video you're, you're hearing, uh, it's an advanced audio CM67. It's a U67 style microphone. And then there's another video that kind of shows all the differences between the microphones. I, I have a pretty interesting studio array because I started my career before I moved into opera as a, a studio vocalist. Oh. People would commission me mm -hmm. to lay down vocals. I'm uh, doing that sort of work. I'm actually on two really big recordings with, um, with Sir Christopher Lee, who actually passed away a few years ago. You remember Christopher Lee. He was Dracula in the 70s and 80s. Oh, he's one of my favorites. The villain. I love all those movies. I love them all. Yeah. He released this heavy metal album, and they were looking for someone to sing with him. Now, he himself had trained as an opera singer before oh. committing himself to acting. He, had, he was also training as an opera singer. So he had this big operatic voice, and they needed someone else with a big operatic voice to sort of match him in a duet. And so I appeared on the first album, and then when it came time to do the second album, I did even more work for them, <laughs> and I appeared on that. So uh, I kind of built the studio around doing studio vocals for myself over the years and collected a bunch of microphones and uh, 
kind of a, a hobby of mine, but also a real passion of mine, too. Me, too. Me, too. So I saw that array, and I'm thinking, boy, I'd like to try something like that. I'm, I'm experimenting all the time. Like with the microphone I'm using right now, I'm not completely happy with. I keep turning things inside out, you know, and just experimenting because some of this isn't exactly textbook, you know. It, it depends on the individual yeah. and uh, the mic technique and all that. So I thought that was great. Yeah, I mean, uh, I actually have a microphone in my studio. It's an old Altec 639A microphone. Well, the Altec 639A was a huge microphone in the 30s, 40s, and 50s, especially in film. Absolutely. Mario Lanza used that mic- a microphone of that in the kind to record everything for the great Caruso. And uh, Judy Garland used that microphone to record Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Oh, you know, yeah. It's not exactly the same sort of sound you'd expect from a modern recording, but it's a sure. really cool microphone to have in the studio just to hear how, hey, you know, if this is what Mario was recording on, how would a modern microphone that you see a lot of times today, like a, like a U87, oh, sure. um, compare to it, what would be the different sound quality you would get from even the same vocal tape? Mario used, I believe, an RCA44 sometimes, too. Is that the one? For most of his commercial recordings, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was a big one. That's a good one. That's really great. So it's great to talk tech, too. <laughs> we don't usually get to do that with our guests too much. Emily, when did you decide you wanted to be a performer or a singer? When did you uh, get that feeling when you were growing up? That's a great question. Um, I think both Vincent and I had parents who sang to us constantly. I remember being a little girl and we would take long car trips down to see my dad's side of the family in Virginia and to combat my motion sickness in the back seat we would sing in the car and my mom was a a good singer as well so I just started moving in dance class and liking to dance when I was little and then that was coupled later with acting and singing and I remember my mom telling me that even when I was little Michael Jackson's Pepsi commercial would come on and wherever I was in the house I would run to the television to see it. So I think I was always just responsive to music and singing and, you know, play acting and dancing. So ever since I was little and can remember, I've I've wanted to do this. And there's a a beauty about live performance that I think um, is, is important because you touch people. You can see there, you know, when we're in an intimate audience, a song that we sing touches someone or brings back a memory for someone and then they'll come up to us and speak with us about it at the end of a show and it's really the hype uh, about what we do and why we do what we do so um that's what i love about performing and i've always felt that way that sounds great i always wanted to hear how people are inspired and usually it's an an early age you know where they uh, they get it and uh, they stick with it and if they have the drive and determination they do well at this and certainly uh, you two uh, are no exception and your accolades uh, include this uh, quote from nino pantano of the italian voice Two of the most promising and talented performers today. Vincent Ricciardi's lyric tenor is blessed with a smooth and easy top and gives the listener much to savor. Emily Wright Ricciardi, secure and saucy soprano, was a model of excellence. We want to thank you so much for being a guest tonight. We're going to play some of your music. Let our listeners know where they can contact you, possibly where you're going to be performing. Well, we've got a few things coming up, but most of it's out on Long Island this fall mm-hmm. at a number of the libraries. We've got some stuff at uh, Connectpot Library and the Old Bethpage Library and the Garden City Library. Uh, and what's great about these libraries is that all of them are free to the public. Great. So they have a really wonderful programming system. And all of the um, upcoming performances for us are on our website. Yeah. You can take a look at us online at E and V Entertainment. Uh, it's Elegance and Vintage Entertainment. So it's E A N D V Entertainment dot com. And from there, there are links to our Facebook page. There are links to the YouTube page where I, I've been doing some live in the studio videos. We're going to get Emily down there soon to do a couple as well. Great. And we post performance um, clips, including audio clips and video clips. Just connect with us via social media, and we post where we're going to be, when we're going to be there. There's a mailing list you can sign up for at our website, and uh, we send out monthly emails showing uh, where we're going to be next, Um, sharing clips with people who may not be connected to us on YouTube or Facebook. 
uh, so they can all see it as well. It sounds good. And Dee and I hope to uh, cross paths with you too at some time, especially, you know, if you're, you're in a tri-state area. So I guess we might be able to come up and catch one of your performances too. We hope we can do that. Thanks again tonight for being our guest on Radio Voice Italia, Vincent and Emily Ricciardi. Thanks okay. so much. Now we're going to close out the interview segment tonight with a few selections from Vince and Emily Ricciardi. Sento che ci 